How do you treat the strange? So the strange is strange things and strange ideas and strange people and strangers, right? It's all that. It's, it's that which is not you. It's like the strange lands that God asked Abraham to move out into. How do you interact with the strange? And here, here's one possible rule, because you could say to yourself, well, what, what do I want to make friends with more? Where do I want to be more comfortable? Do I want to be more comfortable with that which I already know? And so that would be the circumscribed territory that you've already mastered. Or do I want to be comfortable with all those things I don't know? And then the right answer is that you should want to be comfortable with all those things that you don't know, because there's a bloody lot of things that you don't know. And if you can be a sojourner among what you don't know, well, then you're so protected because, well, you're going to go lots of places where you don't know and you're going to be able to manage it. So you want to be, you want to be that person that can act where they don't know. So anyways, Abraham is a master of the stranger. That's one way of thinking about it. He knows what to do when strangers come along and he opens his, he opens himself up to them. And I would say he does that. We know he's not a naive guy, Abraham, right? He's no weakling. A couple of stories ago, he took a big army and, you know, went and harassed a bunch of kings and took his nephew back. He's, he's a tough guy. And so if strangers show up and he welcomes them, it's not because he couldn't do otherwise. He could certainly do otherwise. And it's not because he isn't aware of what people can be like. He's perfectly aware of what people can be like, but he determines to take a particular attitude towards them, and that is to welcome them. And so, and why would you do that? And I, I think the answer to that is you hold out your hand in trust to someone and you evoke the best from them if that's there to be given. So it's an act of courage. It's like, it's, it isn't me meeting you exactly. Not exactly. It's more like the transcendent part of me making a gesture that allows the transcendent part of you to step forward. And that happens all the time. It happens all the time in, in normative discourse. You know this perfectly well because sometimes you can have a real casual conversation with someone that just goes nowhere, right? It's just shallow as can be. Or now and then you can actually make contact with someone, right? And you're both, I would say, enlightened and ennobled by the conversation. And that's a deep, we would call that a deep conversation. For, for some reason, because we made a deep connection. Whatever that means, it, it means, well, it certainly means that it's not shallow. We, we're not sure about what these metaphor means, but it means that it reaches deep inside of you. It's something like that. You make direct person-to-person -person contact. And those sorts of conversations are um, replenishing. That, that's the right way to think about it. They, they genuinely are. And I think that's because they provide you with that bread that's not material bread. And that's the information that you need to, to thrive and, and to put yourself together. And so it does matter how you meet someone and it does matter how you treat them when you first meet them. And it's amazing. I've learned to do this, at least in part, partly because I'm a clinical psychologist. I've learned how to talk to people very rapidly. And I have the most amazing adventures with people in cabs and when I travel because I'll talk to them directly right away. And they'll tell me the wildest stories and show me the craziest things because I'm actually interested in what they have to say. And I'm not afraid. Well, I'm somewhat afraid, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sufficiently afraid to have that stop me. And I'm acting on the presupposition that the person has something of great interest to reveal. And that, that's a very useful thing to know too, because one of the things that's really cool about people, and you really learn this as a clinical psychologist, is that if you can get people talking, they're so damn interesting, you can hardly stand it. You know, because they have these idiosyncratic experiences that are only theirs, right? They're only theirs personally. No one else could tell the story. And that's the kind of stories that you want to hear. And when they tell you those stories, you learn something you didn't know. And so what that means is that you can treat the landscape of strangers as an endless vista of places to learn things you didn't know. And if you know enough so that you're satisfied with your life and everything has ceased to be a tragedy around you, well, then you can be comfortable in your circumscribed domain of of totalitarian knowledge let's say but if you're if your life is insufficient and you're suffering more than you want to and everything isn't what it should be then you need to look where you haven't looked for what you don't have and then you can look outside beyond you and then you can make friends with what you don't understand
And that's a huge part of what this story is about. 